Good morning, people. Watch Women 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ spilled his blood for our past, present, and future sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is grace that God gave his only begotten Son to whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's the gospel, period. That's how we're saved. Once you accept Christ as Savior, you've put your faith and your trust in him. That's accepting him as Savior. You put your faith and your trust in him. You believe in what he's already done at the cross. You're forgiven and you're clean. Now, do we sin every day? Absolutely. Every day. Just ask him for forgiveness. There's nothing wrong with that. You are already saved. You are already sealed until the day of redemption. That's the gospel. Um, when you put your faith and your trust in him, when you make him your savior, you're automatically sealed. He's your best friend. The Holy Spirit guides you. The Holy Spirit leads you. But you're filled up with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changes you. Not only are you saved and rapture ready, but the Holy Spirit will, like I said, seal you until the day of redemption. You cannot lose your salvation, period. You cannot lose your salvation. How do you come to that? You, how do you get saved? You come to the end of yourself, admitting you're a sinner in need of a Savior. There's only one Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. There is no other Savior. There is nobody else that died, spilled their blood on the cross, a torturous death, was buried, and no one else rose again on the third day. It is finished. When you accept Christ as Savior, it is finished. You're clean and you're forgiven. And you will never lose your salvation, period. I got to tell you what's going on here. Biden, this is off a of Prophecy News Watch. Biden appeasement of Iran. And yesterday, the alarms did go off a couple of times. Biden's appeasement of Iran is forcing Israel's hand. What else is new? We knew this was going to happen. Since the dopey administration assumed office, the nuclear talks with Iran have gone nowhere. Six rounds of negotiations have been concluded with no results. In contrast, two other issues have gone too far. The dopey administration's appeasement policies toward the Iranian regime and the advancement of the Mullah's nuclear program. When the dopey administration took office, it announced that it would curb Iran's nuclear program by returning to the 2015 nuclear deal, known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, which, by the way, Iran never signed. And by subsequently lifting sanctions against the Iranian government. Apparently, desperate to revive the nuclear pact, this dopey administration at once began appeasing the ruling clerics of Iran. The first concession was delivered when the administration changed the previous administration's policy of maximum pressure toward Iran's proxy military uh, militia group, the Houthis. Even as the evidence, including a report by the United Nations, showed that the Iranian regime was delivering sophisticated weapons to the Houthis in Yemen, 
The dopey administration suspended some of the sanctions against the terrorism, against terrorism that the previous administration had imposed on the Houthis. Since after the Biden dopey administration revoked. Listen very carefully to this. This is what's this is what's happening right now. While he's playing golf or <laughs> running away or walking away from something. I mean, it was, it, was, it was actually hilarious. But Soon after this administration revoked the designation of Yemen's Houthis as a terrorist group. In addition, in June 2021, a couple of months ago, this administration lifted sanctions on three former Iranian officials and several energy companies. Hmm. Energy companies. I wonder who's involved with that. I think it begins with Hunter. That's right. Then, in a blow to the Iranian people and advocates of democracy and human rights, a few days after the Iranian regime handpicked a mass murderer to be its next president, the Dopey administration announced that it was also considering lifting sanctions against Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. From the perspective of Iran's mullahs, Sleepy Joe's desperate efforts to resurrect the nuclear deal manifested his weak leadership and therefore a delectable opportunity for Tehran to buy time, get more concessions, advance his nuclear program, and become a nuclear state. Become a nuclear state. Guess who they're going to use it by? Guess who they're going to use it against? Notwithstanding all these policies of incentives and appeasements, Iran's mullahs continue to make excuses seemingly to drag out the nuclear talks. One of the latest overtures was that the world's powers ought to wait until Iran's newly elected president, Ibrahim Raisi, or Raisin, took office before resuming the nuclear talks. It says here, by now, Raisin has been president of Iran for more than a month, but there has not been the slightest effort by the Islamic Republic to restart any talks. In fact, all the while, the regime appears to have accelerated its enrichment of uranium to weapon grade. They're at weapon grade now. And if they're not, they're only going, they only have a few weeks, a couple of weeks at most. At most. This escalation has caused even more concern among some European leaders, which has surprisingly led the European Union to pressure Tehran immediately to return to the negotiating table. We vehemently, vehemently ask Iran to return to the negotiating table constructively as, and as soon as possible. We're ready to do so, but the time window won't be open indefinitely. A ministry spokesperson from uh, Germany warned, the time is quickly coming to a close for them to return to the table. And guess what? They know that, and they're not going to do it. After stating that they would resume talks when uh, Ray Rayasi assumed office, I call him Raisin. Iran's leaders are now saying that they are not likely to restart nuclear negotiations for another two to three months. Hmm. I wonder why. The government's, the government considers a real negotiation is a negotiation that produces 
uh, palpable results, allowing the rights of the Iranian nation to be guaranteed. Foreign Minister Hussein Amar Abadal, or whatever his name is, said during an interview broadcast by Iran State Television. He added that the nuclear talks are one of the questions on the foreign policy and government agenda. The other party knows full well that a process of two to three months is required for, a, for the new government to establish itself and to start taking decisions. As Iran's nuclear policy, however, it is not set by the president or its foreign minister. This declaration sounded like just another excuse by the regime to buy time in advance of enrichment. It is, of course, Iran's supreme leader's Ayatollah, Ayatollah Ali, 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 <laughs> Kamani, who enjoys the final say in Iran's nuclear and foreign policy issues. Keep in mind, keep in mind, two things these people want to do. Number one, erase Israel. And number two, erase the United States, which they won't have to do much to do that because we already have a leader that's doing that. <laughs> Seriously. <sighs> At the moment, the Iranian regime is reportedly eight weeks away from obtaining the weapons grade material necessary for a nuclear weapon. Iran has violated all the guidelines set in the GCPOA and it's only around eight to 10 weeks away from acquiring weapons grade material necessary for a nuclear weapon. Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz told assemblers uh, from countries on the United Nations Security Council during a briefing at the Israeli Foreign Ministry in Jerusalem, guess what the time frame of that was? August 4th, so now, they're even closer. They're about three weeks away from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Now is the time for deeds. Words are not enough. It is time for diplomatic, economic, and even military deeds. Otherwise, the attacks will continue. Once again, it seems like the mullahs of Iran are masterfully playing this sleepy and dopey administration and the EU by stalling the nuclear talks, buying time to get more concessions, and accelerating their enrichment of uranium and nuclear program to reach weapons grade nuclear breakout. Folks, like I say every day, judgment has fallen. But the church is still here now. If all these judgments are all if all the judgments, if judgments everywhere, let me tell you what else is happening while I say that. I just got two emails from two, um, two of my subscribers today, and I just got these. This is a video of watching the water turn into blood. Let me tell you what else is happening here. I got another one from another one of my subscribers. River running through the Jordan. That's the same thing. I think this this is the same time, uh, same thing. It's turning into blood and triggering fears of a harbinger. Now listen to this. I'm going to link both of these in the description box. Officials are investigating a river running through the Arad Karak jo uh, region of Jordan, which normally pristine and clear, turned unexpected unexpectedly into a color of red. It looked like blood last week. The river has its source in the water springs at the top of the mountains in Al-Haditha, 
according to, this is off of Israel 365. Omar Salama, a, spokeswoman, a spokesman for the Jordanian Ministry of Water, said that the red pool that appeared in the Dead Sea area is isolated from the sea and does not drain into it, a claim that has been uh, contested online by geologists. Salama said the teams from the Ministry of Water took samples of the red tenant water which are being analyzed. Professor Amid Moalaba suggested that the change in color was caused by algae, which prefers salt water in high temperatures. The, al uh, the algae sec secretes a pink tenant substance. You know what? You can call that what you want. Scientists or no scientists. Something is going on. And no scientist can explain it. But we who are watching, we know what's going on. Now, let me say something. I said something about the judgments. Things are starting to happen. Things are happening everywhere, including there. Things are happening. Some judgments are falling. The bold judgments, the trumpets, and the rest of the judgments won't fall until after we're gone. So all this happening right now is leading us to one thing, the rapture of the church, so the tribulation can take place. God, and I have said this before, will deal with Israel. And he will deal with those who won't accept Christ as Savior right now. A word of advice. You don't want to be here when he deals with this. That's why today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. You want to get saved today. You don't want to delay it. You don't want to wait. You don't want to think, oh, I have plenty of time. Because the rapture is going to happen at any time. Ron. The rapture of the church is going to happen at any time. And you with your attitude saying that, oh, I can do it any time. You're going to get caught off guard by not getting saved. And guess what? You are going to live a life, if you live through it, of misery. It's going to make what we're living in right now look like a picnic. Because what's coming to this earth, judgment will fall. Things are happening now to wake people up. But what's coming to this earth is going to be judgment. Because the church will be gone. The church will be gone. Now, it's up to you. But I wouldn't wait if I were you. I'm going to link both of these articles in the description box. Folks, we're on our way out of here on our way out of here anytime now I will link both of these uh, articles in the description box uh, I'm going to put some more articles on my blog um, I had a doctor's appointment today um, lung doctor I'm okay it's just a checkup but I, it's postponed until Wednesday um, but I really appreciate everybody your prayers, I pray for you guys, every, especially now, every day, because you need strength. And that's what I ask you to pray for. Pray for strength to get through these final moments of these final days. Thank you all for supporting me. I will be back with the next video. Thank you.